When anyone begins learning the piano, the topic of scales always pop up. The problem is 99% of the time, students hate learning scales, and rightly so. They learn them out of a scales book for the purposes of passing an exam, and it turns into a miserable memory test. You may have experienced this for yourself, but if you know how to play scales, a whole new world of opportunity opens up. You can learn music faster because you know exactly what sharps or flats to watch out for. You can write your own melodies because now notes actually sound like they're meant to be there. And finally, believe it or not, using scales you can work out the craziest chords from the craziest pieces without ever having to open up a music theory book. Essentially, all you need is the formula, and it's really quite simple. Let's get to it. So of course, to begin, some of you might even be wondering, what is a scale? Well, essentially, it's just a series of notes that follow a rule, and follow a pattern both up and down the piano. For example, here's the C major scale. Very simply put, it sounds very sort of natural, it sounds very sort of positive, and it is just all the white notes. But not every scale is the same. For example, here's the F sharp major scale. You can hear it sounds positive, it sounds happy, but it's in a completely different place, and now it includes quite a lot of black notes compared to the amount of white notes. So you could learn this through a book, and you would have line upon line upon line of each individual note, and showing you each individual way of playing that particular scale. Now that's great and all if you only have to learn two or three scales and you sort of memorize the notes. But when you've got what? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve it's going to be painful, and you're better off learning this formula. It goes tone, tone, semitone, tone, 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 semitone. Sounds mathematic, sounds complicated, sounds weird, but trust me, you'll get it, no problem. So let's start with a semitone. What is that? Well, essentially, it's the distance between two consecutive notes. And that's not just saying if I'm looking at only the white keys, it's C to D. In fact, in this case, it would be C to C sharp. You can see it's consecutive. It's as close as you can get to that particular note. If I was on the D sharp here, my next note up, a semitone up, would be an E. Or if I was on the E, my next semitone up would be an F. And then so on and so forth as we move up the piano. A chromatic scale that sounds like this is purely made of semitones. So now you've got that, much like a circle requiring two semicircles to make up the full thing, to make a tone, you take two semitones. So two semitones from C would take you up one to C sharp and up another to D. There's your two semitones, so from C to D, it's a tone. From D to E, that's a tone because we've got the semitone in the middle being the D sharp. E to F sharp, that's a tone because we've got the F in the middle, and so on and so forth. The only other example that I could show you is between F sharp to G sharp. There is your semitone in the middle, the G. So F sharp to G is a semitone, G to G sharp is a semitone, and so F sharp to G sharp is a tone. It sounds like I've covered loads of notes in loads of different ways suddenly, but in reality, just a semitone is the consecutive next note, and a tone is two consecutive notes added up. If you think about it like that, you won't go wrong. Now I mentioned at the start, tone, tone, semitone, tone, 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 semitone, and you can already begin to imagine how that gets put into practice to be able to work out a scale. So in this case, if we wanted to work out a scale, a major scale that is, starting on C, we've got to find our starting note and play it, there's our C, and then we've got to follow that rule. Tone, tone, semitone, so that's two tones and a semitone, and then tone, 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 semitone. So that's three tones in a semitone. So from C, we need tone, so that's C to D. We need a tone again, so that's D to E. Then a semitone, which is E to F. And a tone to G, a tone to A, a tone to B, and a semitone to C. Does that make sense. It might seem obvious because at the moment I'm just all on the white notes. You're like, well, what was the point of doing tone, tone, semitone? If you just started on C and hit every white note going up the piano, you would have got it. Yes. But what happens if I say to you now, can you please play me the scale of B flat major? Most people, if you haven't seen it written down in a book, will have no clue 
what that even means, how to begin, and they might have to play a series of notes from B flat to B flat over and over and over again until it sounds like it might be a happy positive scale. But if you use tone, tone, semitone, tone, 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 semitone, you're gonna get it first time. So let's go for it. B flat, that's where we wanna start. We, we play that. Then we go up a tone. So B flat to C is a tone because of course the semitone would be the B in the middle. Then we have a tone, C to D. Semitone, D to E flat, C suddenly, it's not just white notes, we've got an extra black note included in there. Then E flat to F is a tone, we need that. We need two more tones, so F to G. Another G to A for a tone. And then finally a semitone to get B flat. Believe it or not, we've got that same happy positive sound without knowing what the scale is to begin with. And you can do this anywhere. So I'll do it quickly. Let's say it's starting on an A this time. We go right tone to B, tone to C sharp, semitone to D, tone to E, tone to F sharp, tone to G sharp, and semitone to A. There's that sound again. And it doesn't matter where you play on the piano. Of course, it's a repeating pattern. So if someone says to you, right, I want Let's keep it simple, C major, we know it, but I want C major two octaves. You go, wow, well, I've got tone, tone, semitone, tone, 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 semitone. Now I just repeat the same thing again if I want a second octave, tone, tone, semitone, tone, 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 semitone. And suddenly we're at the top, we're at our second octave, and we can just follow those notes that we just played all the way back down again. I wouldn't even bother reversing the formula, just remember what the notes were, now that you've learned it. And you've got every note to hand. Now, it's really worth noting that it doesn't give you the finger positions. You saw as I was playing up there, my thumb crossed underneath, and then as I came back down, my third finger went over the top, and then fourth, and then third. That comes with practice. You can work out how to do the finger positions yourself, but I'll make a video in the future teaching you the best ways to work them out so that you don't have to pick up a book again. But in reality, you take that formula, work out the notes, and then find whatever's most comfortable for you to play. Sneaky tip, if you're gonna start on a black note, never start on your thumb, it makes no sense. If you wanna start on a C sharp, because I know it's gonna be C sharp, D sharp, F, always go second finger, third finger. And then when you get to the white note, that's your immediate chance to get your thumb down. And that works anywhere. So if you're starting on an F sharp major scale, you need three black notes to begin with. You use the formula to work it out, but I know that. F sharp, G sharp, A sharp, B, suddenly I've got my thumb on it, now I'm ready to go for the rest of the notes. And again, when you get to the top of the octave, make sure that you don't use your thumb on a black note. Knowing that rule alone will get you 70% of the way to learning most major scales. Of course, it's not just about learning the theory, you wanna learn why it's worth learning these scales. Well, if I play something like this, I've just made that up, it's composing completely off the top of my head because I know the C major scale, I know a couple of chords in it, we're going to cover that later, and I know that if I hit certain notes in a certain order, it will sound quite nice. If I play the wrong scale over the same chords in my left hand, it's probably not going to work. Let's try C sharp major over the C major chords that I was playing. This is going to hurt. I'm not even sure I got that correct. I think I hit a wrong note. Ironically, the wrong note was probably one of the one notes for fits, but here we go again. No, compared to. You can see why suddenly knowing the right scale for the right set of chords might get you a more desirable result. And that, of course, can be translated to anything. So let's take the F-sharp major scale. I'll sort of play something similar. Of course, I improvised it, so I can't remember exactly what it was, but here we go. Because I know the F-sharp major scale, my right hand can play that, and then I can play some individual notes in the left. Again, I'll cover this in a later lesson to make the piece sound fuller. But I can already hear you asking, yes, that sounds really nice but it sounds really positive, it sounds really happy, and I just want, I want something a bit moodier. Really simple, and this is why the formula is so fantastic. All you need to do is make sure you've got your major scale in your head. There's your C major scale. Get those notes stuck in your head, C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C. Turn them all to numbers, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. In fact, scrap that, you don't even need the notes, you just need numbers, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. 
then flatten the third, the sixth, and the seventh notes. So here we go. One, two, three is normally that, but let's flatten it. One, two, three. Dark already. Four, five. We said flatten the six, so we'll do that. Flatten the seven, let's do that. And then eight. So now if I play something similar to what I just did earlier with the happy major scale, let's do it with the minor scale. Immediately, darker, more evil, and I didn't have to go look it up in a book. All I had to do was know, right, I want to play it in this key, and it needs to be a major scale to start with. Tone, tone, semitone, tone, 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 semitone. Right, I know those notes, nice and easy. Let's flatten them, three, six, and seven. Now let's put the chords with the right hand. comes together. So essentially that's all you need. It's tone, tone, semitone, tone, 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 semitone. And if that's not stuck in your head by now, it's certainly stuck in mine, then I don't know what to say because that will truly change the way that you play the piano. Whether it's improvising, whether it's learning something for an exam, you will have it much, much easier knowing that formula. So here's a suggestion. Here's your practice for the week. The idea being you're going to take that formula and you're going to translate it into 12 different keys. In fact, it's every key that you can play on the piano from C to B going up the chromatic scale. Try each individual one and find out how many sharps or flats exist in that scale. Using tone, tone, semitone, tone, 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 semitone, the only challenge you'll find is working out the finger positions. And I'll make a video on that very soon so you can always learn from that should you get stuck. So thank you very much for watching. If you like this video, don't forget to hit that like button. Subscribe if you haven't already and make sure you've hit that notification bell so that you know when the next lesson comes out of course 10 a.m's on Saturdays. See you then.